Just Getting. a minute. This call is now being recorded. Just a minute. Sir. Is the PowerPoint visible, sir? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Good afternoon once again. I am just uh, going to start off this session. So we are looking at ICT tools and resources for teaching. Before I go into the session, I think uh, most of the people who are participating here are uh, all teachers or faculty members in different colleges. So. Uh, I have a question for you all first. In your college life or school life, uh, were you allowed to carry water bottles inside the classroom? Please uh, put a yes if you have uh, got this experience. Yes. Uh, I want some responses. Yes, yes. Most of you are saying yes. But uh, again, let me now change the question. Uh, were you allowed to carry a bottle of Coke or uh, maybe, you know, thumbs up or some other uh, juice into the classroom? Well, no. Uh, just uh, let us reflect a little bit. What is the difference if a student is carrying a bottle of Coke or a bot bottle of water? Will there be any difference in the process of consumption? How is it going to make a difference in the class? Anyone? So it's not going to make any difference, actually, whether a student is carrying a bottle of a juice or Coke. It's just the, no, that's fine. I am not asking for the technical difference of the product. Yes, one is natural. Uh, we can also have artificial water. There can be a synthesized water also. Anyway, the idea was, it is a mindset, you know. Um, if somebody comes carrying a bottle of Coke, yes, the first reaction we have is, why is that fellow doing this? This is not supposed to be allowed in the class. So likewise, you know, now why I uh, brought out this uh, fact is today the world is changing. The classrooms are different. Uh, the students are different. We are all looking at modern methods of teaching, something which we did not get in classrooms, maybe PowerPoint presentations or, uh, you know, OHPs and other things which came at a later stage, maybe videos. We were not used to seeing videos in classes. But today, all the smart classrooms, we call them smart classrooms. And all these classrooms have all these uh, accessories or teaching tools, you know, to facilitate the teaching process. So interestingly, you know, what happens is the modern student is more familiar with technology and gadgets. So, well, it is us who has to, you know, get adapted to the new technology and systems so that we can be in line or be in tune with the current generation. The first and offhand question is, what is ICT? You can see the answer is there on the screen itself. Information and communication technology required for, you know, information processing, storing, Whatever you say, you know, the use of computers, the use of other devices, it could be mobiles, tabs, laptops, whatever, which can convert, transmit, store, retrieve information and process it anywhere, anytime. A uh, lot of, uh, you know, things which we call as data. Once it is uh, structured and presented well, it becomes information. A lot of things which is just left as data may not be make sense to all. But once it is presented properly, it becomes information. Can we move to the next slide, ma'am? Yeah. So in today's world, we are looking at seven technology trends in education, you know, very important. Artificial intelligence, it is there to stay. 
uh, whether we like it or not robotics and artificial intelligence uh, these are all uh, you know things which is going to be influencing our lives in the coming years to come and these are going to grow internet of things yes we are all aware of that personalized learning we have so many options you know online education other websites apps giving um, uh, you know training and uh, teaching other resources electronic resources as well as uh, you know on the websites virtual reality and augmented reality is also another thing which we need to you know nowadays uh, especially during covid a lot of organizations uh, started giving virtual tours to you know prospective clients so that uh, even at a cost people were buying tours because they were uh, getting uh, bored sitting at home they spent money and uh, took up a virtual experience so yeah, walmart and uh, such business groups are uh, retail, in the retail sector they are looking at starting a virtual buying experience and wherein like you know you can on your uh, screen itself you can have the real time experience of selecting picking up the product dropping it into your bag going to the cash counter and uh, completing the billing process so a lot of new things are coming immersive learning gamification yes this is a old concept wherein uh, but still the gamification is nowadays more with technology and of course a lot of security measures are there you know we have subjects called ethical hacking and obviously everybody doesn't follow ethics so there is a non ethical hacking and a lot of uh, such virus and other uh, you know corrupt systems which can enter into your classroom so you need to take care of all these things uh, madam can we move on yeah well let's look at some of the facts you know why i said what we are going to do now let us look at the interest part of it why it is important and why it is interesting average a children use about 7 and 1/2 hours of entertainment technology and 75% of the children have a device whether it could be a notepad it could be a mobile a laptop <coughs> whatever it is available with them even in their bedroom and well uh, mobile devices continue to be everyone's best friend i give a literal example here i think many of you may agree with me uh, how many of you actually remember phone numbers i sometimes forget my own phone number except for the one which is uh, more in use i have an official phone number i need to refer to my uh, you know mobile to check what is the number any time somebody asks it or it's there on my cards but i don't remember the numbers i don't remember or keep track of mobile numbers anymore because we are all dependent on mobiles mobiles have become our friends of course there was a time in the 19 uh late 80s and early 90s where i had a list of 8 10 important numbers which was memorized but today i don't have the need that is something which we all need to you know it's a good way of spending your time when you are alone when you are sitting at the airport anywhere mobiles are a very important pastime now let us look at what teachers say when uh, they are seeing in terms of edtech edu Uh, technology in the classrooms okay so this is just a sample district which i have uh, taken the data it can tend to vary but more or less uh, the figures are not important the idea is data driven instruction and intervention is the leader tools that promote creativity is uh, coming close personalized learning 48% computational thinking coding and robotics nowadays you know there are lots of uh, of uh, this companies online which the white hat junior and uh, many more you know i don't remember the name which are conducting coding classes right for to children from class 1 or class 2 i don't know whether they'll have uh, learned to walk properly but they are learning technology so that is what the world is today and because everybody is uh, focused on technology yes if we need to as teachers need to be in the process and uh, we need to get on with these things we also have to be tech savvy and tech friendly uh, ma'am can we move to the next one yeah 
see this uh, slide i really just have uh, put it here to make uh, uh, understanding that we are looking at a technology culture in this world we are surrounded by technology i think again uh, a very simple example is see uh, this session is being done by use of technology we are using one of the more popular platforms like google meet i am able to interact with right now i am happy to note more than 150 participants are on so sitting somewhere in a state of india odisha i am able to connect with people across the country and share some information and get some information from all of you so this is what is the culture today everybody is focused on technology we are surrounded with it as i said whether it is the latest televisions which we use for news stock trading apps on the mobile tablets notebooks laptops you name it internet emails i don't know how many of you the present generation uh anybody who is below 30 do you really have have you ever been to a post office when was the last letter that you have written anybody who writes letters still can just uh, put a you know yes in the chat box is there anyone who still writes letters anyone well i see no responses there so i can uh, yeah umawani has mentioned no i don't think the generation which is below 30 would have ever written letters except for examinations maybe they had exams at the english level where letter writing was important for them so that is what we are looking at today the culture of technology and most of the information is sent by a call or an email so can we move on ma'am yeah so i have already told a little bit about what this session is all about i have talk, spoken about the interest factor why it is interesting why you need to you know uh, understand ict and uh, what we are going to actually discuss in this session i have uh, put up here as objectives we'll understand you know what is the use of ict in teaching we'll also look at what are the different areas for sourcing information we'll also try to quickly understand a little bit about acquiring skills what are the skills that we can acquire through ict and lastly we'll just quickly take a look at the advantages and demerits i don't call it disadvantages because that is something which is there to stay the demerits are areas are little gray areas where you know we need to work on to improve so let's uh, see now here you see i have put many tools and resources we must adopt and adapt and only our efforts will be relevant we must be cautious we must be sensible when i say that yes resources are available plenty of options are there but it is up to the individual faculty to ensure that they choose the right resource that is relevant to the curriculum and apply it also in the right manner uh, i keep repeating here technology is there to support you as a teacher it is there to help you get a better impact of your session but remember technology is not there to replace you if i have had the experience where teachers uh, take it that you know they uh, design a powerpoint presentation and uh, everything is written on the slide and a student is uh, standing at the front and changing the slides all of you take down if you are doing that please get out of the system because you are actually killing the class a slide must contain only bullet points and you must be the person who is talking about it if you are putting all your information on the slide then you are not required 
so as a teacher we need to understand that technology is a support for us to generate a better impact maybe a visual impact maybe an audio visual impact yes but it is not meant to replace the teacher the next slide ma'am yeah so i have already told this we'll just uh, make a note what are the major tools which uh, we will find in the classrooms or uh, which we need to be understanding and we need to use these are laptops and notebooks yes mobiles and tablets i think uh, we all have been using lcd projectors we all have been using internet networking in uh, local areas as well as online through different uh, you know meet, uh, social media networks emails and softwares yes different softwares uh, we call it as learning management systems or property management systems or whatever education management systems then there are of course learning platforms some online some digital platforms and also we have different apps you know and uh, we also have online uh, sites where you can go for quizzes and uh, so much more online encyclopedias and so on so wide amount of options available for ict tools ma'am next one yeah what is the use of ict in education as i already said it should give an enhanced learning experience an enhanced learning experience why because you can provide a visual impact you can add audios you can add videos you can also add some sort of games and other uh, appealing pictures or visuals uh, by using virtual reality or augmented reality so that the impact of the session is enhanced self paced learning yes a student can adopt and learn at his or her own pace they can get the inputs from you and you know they can also go home and sit and watch videos or learn things uh, a very common example is if you want to replace um, let's say a tube light and you are not sure how today you don't need to call an electrician all you need to do is uh, go to youtube and say how to replace my tube light and a video will be there which will take you through the steps you just see the steps learn and duplicate so even uh, other activities you know how to change the tire of a car all these things are available on youtube so that is self paced learning you can do it at home you can do it at your own convenience integrated dynamic and interactive learning integrated when i say yes you can integrate sessions from different sources you can gather data from different sources and integrate it it is dynamic because it is two way people can uh, participate and they can put their uh, points you can even also have you know in technical sessions you can have the respondents also sharing their uh, screen and uh, multiple people sharing their sessions interactive yes as uh, we are also having here wherein i put some questions and people start sharing their inputs there are plenty of tools for assessment you can create your own you can also use existing ones if you are creating your own make sure that uh, you are using the right kind of assessment parameters and also ensure that the assessment results are explained to the students collaborative learning yes students can uh, collaborate together and uh, you know discuss or share their points and learn together the curriculum can be highly updated by use of uh, ict because you can go to the websites of different colleges and leaders of that the particular field and uh, gain the curriculum from different sources and then build your own there are opportunities of application of knowledge yes it could be in uh, engineering or it could be in uh, you know uh, computer science itself where you can create softwares i have seen uh, my 10 year old uh, boy you know he creates codes and he has made a mobile kit which uh, 
he has designed seeing some uh, other uh, sites and he has picked it up and uh, he uh, just called me once and see that what I've made and I see that yes he has created a game and it's quite interactive and he's playing it well so these kind of opportunities are there and obviously yes we have infinite scope for exchanging of knowledge what we are able to do today also uh, ma'am next one yeah so I uh, wanted to reiterate what is the importance the main reasons why we need to use ICT in education obviously um, you know it is the demand of the society and the time people are in with technology if you are not you will not be visible or you will not be recognized you have to update the curriculum in that system it is a continuous learning process there is a lot of digital and informational competence required for that communication action is there in cyberspace and uh, productivity and you know the at the personal level also and at the group also it is uh, very impactful and also you must understand there is methodological innovation systematic development and growth and a lot of research which depends on ict so when you look at the entire uh, thing there is so much of content nowadays that uh, no teacher can physically remember everything they need to take support of data storage and you know filter out what information you want to share can we move on ma'am yeah. so let us look at uh, what are the different uh, you know areas of e learning you can introduce your abstract concepts this is more in the area of research you introduce your concepts leave it to the students let them you know work on it get back to you then you have a discussion it could even be you can uh, put up a small uh, tip and uh, see how they take it up innovative teaching learning procedures are there yes uh, all these experiential learning gamification everything is possible through technology industrial technical inputs you can have experts on a video call come and share their points you can also, you know, in a in middle of a session, let's say you are talking about um, a management uh, area of uh, human resources, and you have some uh, HR manager of a leading group drop in for a few minutes and convey some points on that particular topic. It adds a lot of value to your classroom. Uh, there are lots of teaching aid and resources available. As I said, it is uh, so much that you cannot remember everything hands-on in uh, advanced technological tools are available you can target multiple audience and intelligence today if you look at it uh, now i am seeing that the number of students attending or number of uh, faculty members in the session is around 190 so if you look at it uh, maybe many of them are at different levels so i am able to address all of them at the same time multiple intelligences and also you know it increases the effectiveness of the teacher face-to-face -face interaction is aided through computers uh, you can conduct assessments it can be formative it can be summative but now it, the indian system is more dependent on summative but yes we need to incorporate a lot more of the formative assessment systems it improves your uh, classroom productivity the students, uh, you know, they are more alive in the session. And since they are more tech savvy, yes, they take to this uh, e-learning more easily. Can we move on, ma'am? Yeah. Now, let us uh, look at the second objective that I had set, sourcing information. Now, I have uh, put on here a picture where you can see there are numerous sources of information. There are Google Slides, there are Google Docs. Uh, we have <coughs> Firefox, Google Chrome, different search engines. You have Twitter, you have Skype, you have Wikispace, you have SlideShare, you have Dropboxes, you have Bing, you have Drigo, 
religious, Facebook, so on. I am not <coughs> saying that this is a complete list. It goes on. There are other social media sites like LinkedIn and so on. So question comes here is options are huge. So how do you select or how do you source your information? Uh, can we move on back? Yeah. Again, I am uh, listed here 10 of the most popular websites which uh, are available. The most popular websites are obviously like Google, Twitter, Delicious, YouTube, Blogger, Picasa, StumbleUpon, Amazon.com, About.com, also Wikipedia, Facebook, Flickr, and so on. But yes, a word of caution here is all these sites are definitely not the sites which are guaranteeing authentic information. So you need to, you know, filter the information that you want to collect from any of these sites. Yes. <coughs> In Wikipedia, you can uh, check it out. There are lots of information which is validated. Those information you can directly use. But there are lots of information where Wikipedia mentions very clearly that this uh, topic needs to be validated or this content is still being validated such content be cautious verify those contents before you use them in the classrooms not only that uh, when you type something in google you know today uh, most of the young generation we have lost the practice of actually going to libraries and seeing the textbooks or uh, published journals or other such uh, sources of information. The most common practice is uh, you just Google it in your mobile and see. But be cautious there. A lot of times, a lot of information which is available on Google or uh, such sites has to be authenticated. If you take information from government sites or official websites, yes, they can be quoted. Remember to you know keep a link of the page and also the date and time you have accessed the site. So that way it can be sure that you are doing some serious and authentic work. Can we move on, ma'am? Yeah. Again, uh, I have listed a number of sites here which uh, many of us use for research. So when we are talking about research, we get a lot of content from all these sites, you know, ResearchGate, Mendeley, Zotero, uh, SSRN, RIPEC, these are all uh, digital and disciplinary repositories. We also have our own, you know, Shodganga or Inflipnet that we call it, where uh, which is a collection of uh, all the theses of uh, different universities in our country. Of course, Google Scholar and, uh, you know, so many other sites like, uh, um, um, as I said, ResearchGate was one. Uh, so these all these sites have a lot of publications or pre-pubs which is there but yes please again as i said verify the content see whether it is published in a authentic source before you use it khan academy is one of the you know popular academies for self-learning where there is a lot of teaching and reference material available um, you can also have practice a lot of uh, subjects like coding and other things in the online uh, system itself. So yes, you need to take a look at it and see that, you know, your work is progressing in the right fashion. Can we move on, ma'am? Now let us uh, look at this. What are the merits and demerits of using ICT sources of information? This is not the merits and demerits of ICT. I am just giving you the merits and demerits of <coughs> sourcing the information. <coughs> so when we look at the advantage, yes, most important one is access. You need information, you get it instantly. Just Google it, you have the information. 
it is very inexpensive you don't need to travel anywhere time saving allows you to generate new insights from previous analysis yes a lot of such content is available and uh, you can do longitudinal analysis the study spans over a period of time anyone can collect the data you need not do it yourself a huge amount of secondary data is available in the market again when you look at the disadvantages yes it may not always be according to your requirements you need to have patience don't take it what happens is when someone uh, wants a particular site to open they have a paid promotion so when you go to google and put a keyword somebody whose keyword matches that and who has got a paid promotion that sites will come first and it will be visible so you may not be actually looking for that site and it may not be the actual first or most best option you have to be little choosy you have to collect the information step by step you have to filter it and you can't control over the quantity of data huge quantity of data will come out so that's what as i say you have to be very cautious in checking then uh, the data can be biased in favor of the person who has gathered it yes there is a lot of bias and it might be outdated also you may not necessarily get the updated data unless that is also uh, <clears throat> you know uploaded and you are not the owner of the data so others can also access it so you must be prepared for what kind of uh, questions or consequences are there if you are using any external data source can we go on ma'am next one <clears throat> yeah now let us uh, look at what is technology integration means this concept is integrating the technology into your classroom or into your work and making sure it is balanced in the right way so that the delivery process gives the best impact that can be possible or ideally when we talk about it it provides knowledge transfer or it facilitates transfer of knowledge so <clears throat> let us uh, look at the points there the use of technology must be planned and it must be purposeful what i mean to say here is we have been told to use technology in the classroom so i am going to teach english so for teaching english i have been told to use technology so let me show a video a tom and jerry cartoon i am going to show in the class how is it relevant to my subject ideally what happens is many uh, teachers you know do it for the sake of doing it cannot be like that whether the content is relevant to the class whether it is in line with your curriculum if you see the next point it must <clears throat> support your curriculum goals and it must engage the students obviously showing a cartoon will engage the students they laugh but whether it is relevant for the subject that you are teaching and whether it is actually delivering the right content that is important you cannot use technology one day and uh, you know giving an example today students can use their mobile phones and search content <coughs> the next day they are not allowed to use mobiles in class this will create a divide your use of the technology must be routine it must be regular <coughs> you may definitely say that for the next 10 minutes i want you all to switch off your mobiles because you are concentrating on something else but do not make a practice of saying that on particular day i'll allow you rest of the time you know this is not permitted the students uh, are also very technologically they are very much advanced and uh, do not deprive them of the learning process with which they are more comfortable you must focus on developing the thinking process how you want to you know touch them higher order thinking that means bloom's taxonomy if you are all aware of that 
move on from the <coughs> understanding and you know remembering to application and analysis and finally to evaluate and create so you must be ensuring that you are focusing more on analysis application evaluation and creation don't limit your teaching to the lower order thinking levels of recall or remembering and understanding so <clears throat> you must facilitate collaboration <clears throat> let the students work together make group activities try to promote you know exchange through the technology available try to make it constructive and try to build the knowledge it is essential to the learning activity if the technology is not required certain classes you need not use but if you want to use technology ensure that it is essential for example if you want to have a simple additional work or multiplication do not provide calculators try to ensure that students <coughs> do it in the normal fashion use their brains also technology as i said before is there to help it is not there to replace your own process can we move on ma'am yeah now again let us look at it i like this slide it is there in most of uh, my presentations when we talk about the teaching learning process you see the top 3 here the top part of the triangle when we read we remember only about 10% 20% of what we hear 30% of what we see the visual impact is much higher and so far is what we look at as passive learning hearing or seeing now when we come we participate in the discussion or we try to you know do certain things the learning increases to 70 percent and when you are actually doing a demonstration or when you are conducting the session and you are teaching others then you remember 90 percent of what you have been doing so the uh, amount of uh, involvement that is there this is what we call as active learning so try to ensure that your sessions move from passive learning where you as a teacher are delivering and students are listening involve them make them the leaders of the lesson make them involved in the classes participative discussions and exchanges use technology ask them to make presentations evaluate those and you will see that knowledge transfer increases from you know 10 20 30 or whatever to the 70 to 90 percent and the engagement of the students will also be much higher <coughs> can we move to the next one yeah ict is a three-way approach <coughs> First, the teachers and students both must learn about ICT. You must develop knowledge in what are the, you know, communication technology and uh, that what you need to, you know, what are the gadgets, what are the ways you want to use and how you want to apply this ICT information and communication technology to support your classroom teaching or learning <clears throat> the second aspect is learning with ict where the teachers and students use different tools you uh, work together use the resources and you know you support the classroom sessions and you learn from each other and you share knowledge so everybody gets a lot of information which they can take back they can review and again come and engage and discuss and so on which is what most of us do in classrooms <clears throat> and lastly where you know uh, learning through ict when i say learning with ict we are learning with the systems 
now learning through ICT, we are using ICT to learn. We are transforming the learning process, whether we are going to a digital classroom, whether we are saying it is a flipped classroom, we acquire the knowledge from somewhere and then use the ICT to share this or disperse this knowledge amongst the fraternity. So these are the three major ways of approach of you know application of ICT in current day. Can we move on, ma'am? <clears throat> This is a very quick slide. Initially, all of us need to be familiarized with the ICT tools and <coughs> the resources. We need to understand the utilization. We need to you know, plan how to integrate it in our uh, classroom. We need to look at how we can reorient the sessions so that ICT can be a part of it and evolve from there. Evolution is continuous. A session which is made today cannot be repeated after sometimes even tomorrow, sometimes in the next batch because a lot of things change by that time. So all of us need to remember that each and every session is a new one and you have to update your information. Uh, can we move on, ma'am? <clears throat> yeah. So what are the different stages of ICT integration? Emerging, applying, infusing, transforming. Uh, learning about ICT, I said, first you get, get the awareness. What is it? How to use it in your subjects? How and when to apply? And you specialize in the use of ICT. Teaching with and through ICT, you have to apply the different productivity tools. You have to evaluate. You have to ensure that the traditional teaching experience is enhanced by using ICT some more impact is added facilitating learning using multimodal instructions means instructions can come from different sources or modes <clears throat> some can be physical some can be online some can be on mail some can be virtual so and some can be through students also so you have a multimodal instruction setup and you need to create and manage innovative and open learning environment when i say open learning environment what i mean to say is it is an environment where every participant of the session is free to and fearless to express his points or thoughts it should not be that i speak only when i am asked to anybody is free to express their ideas and we can evaluate and discuss on the same can we move on, madam? Okay. Now we are coming to the third part of the presentation for our objectives, if you remember. What are the skills that we can acquire using ICT? Well, the slide is quite self-explanatory, but I'll just talk about some of the skills. Information and data literacy is there through ICT. You learn to browse, you learn to, you know, evaluate data, you learn to access digital content, different sources. I am not going to talk about the sources here. Communication and collaboration. You learn to communicate with others, whether it is through emails, whether it is through social media, whether it is through calls. And you learn to collaborate. Let's say there is a management lesson where uh, we need to organize the event so there are five groups so one group takes care of planning one group takes care of execution one group takes care of directions one group takes care of security one group takes care of something else so you know when you understand how you can uh, collaborate together so the content can be dispersed then collated together and a proper presentation or a complete picture can be coming it is like a jigsaw puzzle Five pieces are there, you put them in place and you form the palm. Digital content creation, yes, nowadays there are lots of portals where you know uh, you are encouraged to create content and uh, they provide online learning facilities. So <clears throat> next we have safety, as I said, hacking is one of the biggest businesses today. So to prevent hacking happening, Ethical hackers are there, lots of uh, data protection, privacy, 
firewalls and so on and lastly problem solving technical problems it can be software based it can be technology based it can be even uh, hardware based so all these can be learned different skills which can be learned through ict can we move on back yeah now here i am putting some of the more common skills or things that uh, you know we can look at in classrooms you can uh, you know help your students they can start writing blogs they can do podcasting they can learn programming and designing they can learn how to tag whether it's a picture geo tag picture or whether it is to tag a person in a you know or tag a person in a post something like that you learn how to upload your information you learn to write tweets and uh, you learn to bookmark pages so that you can use that for reference you learn to search for information you learn editing information data filtering also downloading you learn from which are sources you can download where you need to you know take a screenshot and then rewrite you learn to subscribe to at the beginning of this session you know uh, the academy uh, madam had uh, posted please subscribe to our youtube channels i hope you all have learned that you all can go and subscribe that will be a good add to this uh, <clears throat> crowd sourcing sourcing of funds also can be done through crowds experimenting yes a lot of experimenting can happen commenting on uh, posts linking and sharing and so many more a lot of skills which you can acquire through ict can we move on ma'am now <clears throat> we are coming to the last part of this presentation what are the advantages and disadvantages of ict in education well <clears throat> first and foremost is uh, it helps in promoting what we call as experiential learning it helps in learning by doing this approach which helps a student to remember or learn 70 to 90 percent if you recall the earlier slides <clears throat> ict helps you to achieve that it enables self-paced learning yes you learn at your own convenience you see this uh, session once it is over the video would be posted on youtube so someone who has uh, been a part of this session and who has not heard some part of the session for whatever reasons could be technology failure or could be you were busy with something you always have the opportunity to <clears throat> take the presentation in YouTube and uh, watch it at your own spare time. And after that also, if you have some queries, you can post it. So the Academy will share that with me and I can always get back to you. It provides access to a wide range of up-to-date learning materials. Again, as I said, it's a challenge because not all information that is available is genuine you need to be very cautious you need to ensure and validate the information for yourself keep the sources available you can write to the source to check whether it is genuine once you get confirmed with the source you apply those so it enriches learning <clears throat> there is a visual impact you can show videos there is images you can have text you can have animation all this will improve the attention span of the learner the learners uh, you know mind would be more focused on the classroom and obviously interaction and collaboration supports learning whatever extent you are able to you know uh, make the groups amongst the students they will be able to collaborate together and you know uh, create some new knowledge or <clears throat> pile up more information for themselves and obviously yes this is a platform that engages the students well because they are more familiar with these uh, tools they are happy to work together can we move on madam yeah now few more advantages there are packages word processing dtp spreadsheets which can be used so which helps to you know assimilate data very easily uh, you can have a 
you know a uh, google form and uh, you can share it to the students and uh, instead of handing out question papers or answer booklets the results can also be self declared and all this happens at the click of a finger so it's so fast spreadsheets multiple people can edit the spreadsheet by using a google spreadsheet so yes saves time saves money saves energy lot of things there are special facilities for people with disabilities yes <clears throat> so a student who is physically handicapped can sit at home and learn the communication between the teacher and the students will improve because uh, many of the times you know only the how to say the content is more focused on personal thoughts and uh, your uh, other things are kept aside so it improves links with other schools and businesses yes you have a wide network you can uh, share data you can share information and uh, you know all this uh, brings the community closer computers provide wider access to ict encourages new ways of learning yes and you can repeat the work again and again you need not uh, you know it's not boring like going to a classroom and uh, getting stuck with something so can we move on ma'am yeah now let us uh, and also look at it there are disadvantages everything as i said this is demerits or disadvantages but yes we need to you know find ways to overcome this students can only follow what the packages are predefined to offer whatever the cal packages are there what is uh, you know the artificial learning or whatever in, uh, thing that you have shared only that they would have access face to face interaction as i said may sometimes be reduced which also has its own value sometimes the compassion and uh, you know the empathy which is possible only on a face to face is missing the human touch is missing in a technical or online session completely obviously yes technology doesn't come cheap there are lots of costs involved so education and training it can also you know generate a little bit of uh, difference amongst the students somebody will have access to very high quality gadgets high speed internet somebody may not be having the resources so yes there can be a bridge or a gap which can be created between students so you need to be uh, very cautious about that because during covid i have the experience where uh, teachers uh, were forced to take online sessions and there were students who used to live in uh, remote areas having no access to regular internet and uh, even mobile data so <clears throat> i have seen students <coughs> climbing and sitting on trees to access the mobile tower and attend classes so which is again uh, not something which is the best way of learning or best way of teaching wasting of study time doing unproductive work is also quite possible because many students may just put the screen on and be doing something else or uh, you know you start browsing you search for something but over a period of time you keep on going into something else so all these kind and also exposure to illicit material yes that is the biggest problem there is a lot of porn sites and uh, things which pop up at times children even uh, adolescents or uh, young adults you know uh, are very curious they may visit sites and uh, you know they get exposed to uh, unnecessary content which can even uh, influence their way of thinking and way of living so all these are disadvantages which do exist and fact is these are the things we need to need to learn to live with today can we move on ma'am yeah as i said the expense part yes not all students have the same opportunities it can be boring sitting in front of a computer for a long time it can affect your eyes you can uh, get diseases you can become a couch potato computers cannot interact on personal level yes they cannot uh, give you they can only tell you what it is programmed to do and it becomes harder for teachers yes teachers the work for teachers has become increasingly difficult over a period of time 
because they need to keep abreast of so much of things content technology and skills and be a step ahead of their students so these are all some of the challenges next slide ma'am <clears throat> yeah so before i end the presentation i need to reiterate some points again i said this in the beginning when i was talking about this uh, program what is it what is interesting what are the objectives i have covered those what i want to reiterate here is the tools are teaching tools are for support they cannot replace you be sure that your students are more familiar with the gadgets and new technology they are more faster so if you try to take them for a ride at the end you will find that you have been taken for a ride for a long period of time and you have never even found out you must be doing a lot of research and you must be ahead of technology your security level needs to be high you need to have good firewalls and protection you need to focus and develop and deliver content which is relevant to the curriculum and at the same time which is interesting and engaging if not the entire process will be a mega failure can we move on ma'am okay now i am going to quickly touch two broad things first the top 10 online learning platforms i don't know how many of you have done uh, online courses in any of these platforms i myself have done courses from uh, swayam from coursera from edx from masterclass and from uh, i think uh, udemy but yes uh, these are all some of the common learning platforms where you know you have both paid as well as free classes it's up to you if you want to get certified classes you can go there are other learning platforms like alison and more but uh, yes these are the top 10 learning platforms the next slide ma'am platforms for knowledge sharing when i say yes we are using google meet this is one platform zoom blackboard microsoft teams there are lots of other platforms quiz platforms are there many more online quizzes you have online uh, you know uh, <clears throat> encyclopedias like wikipedia and many more so i am just touching this here and i am saying that this is like an ice iceberg the tip is there for you all to see keep digging the more you dig the deeper you get the more information and the more availability or resources that that is available for you all so that is uh, what i have from my side i uh, would like to thank iot academy for uh, giving me this opportunity to share this with all of you and i am open to take a uh, few questions and i am saying that uh, right now we have about 219 odd participants it's uh, excellent to see all of you have taken time to come and attend this session thank you very much i am uh, available for any questions if you have